Ahoy everyone and welcome. I'm your Captain Salty Dog, this here's Morton, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with the Captain. On this episode, we're going to be doing a dish called Baha Corn, which is Korean street corn, and I think you are going to enjoy it very much. Me and Morton have also sailed the seas to get the ingredients to put together a fine salsa for you guys to try, along with some guacamole. So come join me and Morton with this culinary experience, August 6th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard, for episode two of Cooking with the Captain. Ahoy and welcome everyone, I'm your Captain Salty Dog. Welcome to the cooking stream. How y'all doing today? How you all doing today? Welcome, welcome to Cooking with Captain, episode two. I am your Captain Salty Dog. My co-host Morton is downstairs getting the kitchen prepped as we speak. He is my sous chef today, getting all the ingredients and everything together so that we can have a fantastic stream and you can learn how to make a awesome set of dishes today. Uh, we've got two dishes on the hook for today. Uh, dish number one, uh, requested by many, is Baha Corn, a Korean street corn. Uh, it is, uh, I, I love it as a meal, and I love it as a snack, and I love it as a side. I guarantee if you make this dish, I guarantee if you make this dish, uh, you'll get invited back to whatever dinner party you brought it to. And uh, if you're making it for loved ones, uh, they're going to love you more. They're gonna love you more, uh, for sure. And then a second uh, dish that we're making today um, is a pineapple mango salsa. Um, it's been a while since I've made salsa. I made salsa like a one time, a long time ago. So this is gonna be like getting into it, kind of do it. We're gonna make some homemade tortilla chips. Oh yeah? <laughs> it's an awesome theme song, I love it. It's one of my favorite theme songs, for sure. Uh, actually, as I tell that everybody here, this is brand new, I want I've been encouraging people to go over and check it out. I have dusted this off, uh, but if you go over, blah, 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 let's pull it up on the. Uh, fast, nope, don't don't be playing stuff fast. We pull it up on the display here. Is it this one? It is. Check it out. YouTube. YouTube's getting dusted off. If you like the theme song. You can go over to my YouTube. Let's uh, clear the song song alert here. Hang on a second. Song title, get out of the way. Scoop. I, uh, I dusted off my YouTube. You can go check out the channel theme song and music video to that theme song. As well as you can check out past Twitch VODs. I just started updating that as, long, as well as highlights. So if you don't have other social medias, and as you saw in the beginning there, we have our social medias. Bada bing, bada boom, bada ba. You can follow me on this. You're already here on Twitch, but if you're seeing this in the future on YouTube and you're not following me on Twitch, why aren't you? Come on down. We'd love to have you. You can see all of my shenanigans live and not just catch everything on the back end. Also, Twitter is when I'm going live. Instagram is other things uh, as well as when I'm going live, but also recaps of things that I've done. And TikTok is not only stuff related to Twitch. I do other things as well. Uh, there you can see some of my uh, horror uh shorts yes i do horror shorts uh, that's kind of cool right and some of those are going to go up to youtube as well uh since we kind of dusted off but please please go check those out exclamation point discord i'll do it for you free here in chat bam you can go and join that and see all the fun shenanigans that we have for you there good time let's get rid of this screen and yeah so there you can see the theme song music video all the good stuff for us here but today uh, let's talk about why you're here uh all the good stuff right so as i was saying i'm also gonna be making a salsa i've made this salsa in a while uh so we're gonna be making a homemade fresh salsa i have people coming over uh tomorrow for dungeons and dragons and uh, they need some food uh so we're gonna have a couple of drinks have a couple laughs make some good food learn some cool things and uh i'd like to hear from you about some of your favorite recipes we will have a vote on the next time we do a recipe, and if you give me some recommended recipes that you'd like to see, um, well, hey, it could be featured here. Love to see it. So let's go to the live scene. Uh, I'm gonna disappear for a moment. We're gonna go downstairs to the cabin, the kitchen, the cooking accoutrement. Join Morton, who's got everything ready for us here. And we're gonna make some food. We're gonna make some food. Uh, so let's turn the music. I hope you guys can hear some of the music here. We're going to turn down my microphone and I'll meet you guys downstairs. 
See you soon. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, your Captain Salt Dog. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. Let's make sure that this is all coming in clear and well and good and good and well and well and good and well. Welcome to the kitchen. Let's double check here. So I've got chat in front of me so I can see all y'all. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I'm coming in crystal clear. We're gonna do a little, we're gonna do a little check here. We're gonna do a little equipment check, shall we? Oh, there we go. Okay, we're gonna double mic. We're gonna double mic. Double micing's not fun. No one wants that. Okay, but uh, I've got my buddy Morton here, and welcome to the kitchen. Appreciate you here today. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that we're doing today. Let's take a look at all of the good stuff. Um, I have my cutting board in front of me. I have my stove top behind me, and we're gonna talk a, lot, a little bit of some of the ingredients that you're gonna see today that are gonna be used. So for our baja corn. Let's see here, that's my fruits and my veg. Okay, for my Baja corn here, we've got, very simply put, uh, two cans of corn. It's very simple, two cans of corn. Uh, you can use your favorite corn. Uh, I use uh, crisp and sweet. Why? Because uh, crisp and sweet sounds delicious to me, you know? Uh, that's something that I really like. Another thing we're gonna need here is condensed milk. Uh, condensed milk, uh, it's sweet, it's creamy. So yes, this is gonna have a little bit of sweetness to it. Actually, it's gonna have a lot of sweetness to it. Uh, we're gonna use about a half a can of this, two cans of that, half a can of this. Uh, it's gonna sweeten this up a little bit. Then I've got my fresh garlic. Fresh garlic is necessary for this. It's gonna give us the tanginess. Uh, that's gonna counteract a little bit some of that sweetness. Of course, we've got salt, we've got pepper. These are two things that are gonna add to as well. We got plenty of butter here. I'm not gonna pull that out um, just because I have it set to the side and it's kind of a pain. Then for a little bit of spice and heat, we've got fresh jalapenos. We have two jalapenos here. We're gonna spice it up with this. Uh, fresh jalapenos, we are gonna use the seeds in this. We want the seeds, the seeds is where the heat is. We want a little heat on this one. So there, there is where we got our fresh jalapenos, 120%. We're gonna to top it off with some green scallions. Again, this is also gonna add some of our, um, some of our tanginess, and well, it's gonna add a little bit of spice, not that much. And then for our savoriness, on top of the corn, uh, we've got bacon. We've got some bacon. Thick cut, center cut bacon. We're gonna crisp this up in the pan. That's gonna be our oil, it's gonna make our fats. That's what's gonna give us a little bit of the good stuff uh, that we need to get things going. Now you can make this without bacon. If you wanna make this vegetarian, you can make this without bacon. It's not vegan uh, because of the sweetened condensed milk. It's not vegan. Uh, also, you know, I like to use a little bit of butter. Uh, you don't have to add the bacon though if you wanna make it a vegetarian dish or you have someone who has sensitivity to meats. This is not a requirement. What I would say then is just add a little extra salt or MSG, uh, modium so sodium glucomamate. That way you have a little bit of that umami flavor, that saltiness, because you're gonna lose that if you lose it, uh, lose your bacon, which is fine. Um, yeah, you could also do tofu bacon, of course. Any kind of meat substitute that you prefer, that would be the way to do it. Um, then for our salsa, I've got fresh veggies here. Um, give me two seconds, let me pull them up. You're gonna hear me kind of mulling around in the background here. So we have the female, you have the outside? You have the outside? You have the outside? No, now you strong. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Got my dog over to the side there, Bimo. She's hanging out in the background there being a little naughty girl, but hey, what are you gonna do? Okay, now for our salsa, I've got two different onions. I got my reds and I got my yellows. All blaze, send sail with the crew, welcome aboard. For me and Morton, we appreciate you. Welcome to the salty crew, we appreciate you. Welcome on in, your first time to the stream. Appreciate you stopping on by. Welcome to cooking with the captain. Grand time. Um, so we've got two onions. Uh, we got a red and we got our yellow. Now yellow, I got a sweet Mayan onion, and then the red I got because this is gonna give us that really, I call it the spicy onion flavor. Red onion's got that really 
oniony onion flavor. So we got this. And this is kind of like the one that you like to caramelize. I like to blend the two of them when I'm making my salsas because uh, I find that it just adds a little bit of like these different flavors. You get a lot more sweetness with this one. You get a lot more onion with this one. Combining the two, dicing it up real fine in that salsa. They really like to play on each other. You think, oh, they're both onion. It tastes like onion. Um, it doesn't. And if you um, cook this up a little bit, which is what we're going to do, it's going to caramelize a little bit. It's going to get more of that sweetness out of it. And that's going to add a little bit of the sweetness to our salsa. Because with our salsa, we're not using a lot of sweet parts to it. We're actually using a lot of peppers and onions. And so a lot of it is going to have you know, um, a lot of that, that harshness to it. Now we are doing a fruit salsa, so we're gonna have mangoes and we're gonna have pineapple. That's gonna add citrus, it's gonna break down the flavor. I also have limes to really hit that citrus flavor home. Um, this sweetness, if we caramelize it, it's gonna bring out more of those flavors and it's really gonna make that salsa kind of shine. Now, we don't want it too sweet. We don't want it too sweet because if you have it too sweet, you have another you have another problem. Then some people are not really into sweetness. I believe in a balance of flavors. So we have my favorite pepper of all time to balance those flavors. We got poblano. Now poblano pepper, um, if I recall correctly, on the Scovilles, it's a little bit spicier uh, than a jalapeno, but it has a lot of smokiness to it. I love the smokiness in this pepper. It's so good. Uh, to have and again we're gonna use seeds we're gonna seeds and all we really want to use every part of this seeds and all to make things happen and then i have my standard pepper mix um i don't know about other people but this is my standard pepper mix i got my red my yellow my orange a little bit of each a little bit of each goes a long way it's really going to make different brightness and tones in that uh, salsa and appealing too right visually this is appealing you have all these different colorful things in there it's really going to make your food stand out and again i bet if you serve this up you're going to have a grand time now a lot of people use bigger tomatoes um, i like to use these little sweet ones these little sweeties uh, sweet cherry tomatoes um, you can just use regular cherry tomato tomatoes these aren't uh, necessary a cherry type tomato but these are called uh, sweeties at least at my local market uh, they're just smaller oh goodness well that one's gone and that goes to the floor monsters, it's gone. But these little sweet ones, they pack a lot of flavor and they're gonna be a lot more complex. Uh, tomatoes, they're very acidic, right? And when we're adding in limes and other things to uh, the salsa, right? Uh, it's gonna be a very acidic uh, thing. That's where a lot of the flavors and the spices come. So we wanna cut that a little bit. I like to cut a little bit. I like to make a sweeter salsa. Uh, then I have a really nice salty chip with a nice sweet salsa on a hot summer's day with a cool margarita. That's where it's at. So that's a money, right? So we're gonna use these. I got a whole bunch of them. We're gonna dice them all up into real thin ones. And then last but not least, I don't have it uh, on my table here. I have to snag it from behind the camera. Uh, I have peanut oil. Now, I will put a little bit of peanut oil in with my blender when I'm making my salsa to make it kind of more of that, they call it restaurant style. It's that very thin salsa, not necessarily chunky. Um, depending on how thin or how um, chunky you want your salsa is how much you're gonna blend it or not blend it at all. It's your preference. Um, the way I like it, maybe not be the way that you like it. Uh, I don't like mine super blended, like the restaurant style where it's kind of watery. That's not something that I'm a big fan of. Um, but I don't like it so chunky that I'm chewing, uh, I'm chewing my salsa, right? I'm gonna chew my chips, not my salsa. Now I have pre-made uh, chips, like ones you can do in a bag, that's perfectly fine. Um, but this wouldn't be a cooking show if we didn't make some chips. So I've got these. Uh, I really like these, these are Tumeros, okay? Tumeros multi-grain, uh, these are carb conscious chips. Uh, you don't have to go carb conscious, you can go whole hog if you really want to. Um, I try to do less carbs in my life uh, just because uh, less carbs in my life keeps the ticker going and uh, keeps the waistline thin. <sighs> um, but these are nice. These are three grams per um, uh, per uh, tortilla. These are really cool. Uh, so I like these. Uh, we're just going to slice them up, fry them in some peanut oil, add a little bit of salt, bada bing, bada boom, bada ba. You got it. We got it. So that's kind of what we have uh, floating around here uh, for the mix. Um, so we're going to get into some cooking. Let me grab my oil 
let me let the dog out for two seconds because she's pacing, she's got to go. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be rolling and, and trolling. We'll switch the camera to face down. You guys can see what I'm doing here on the cutting board. Or did I be smart? I put it up here. Ah, I put it up here on camera. How about that? So you guys can see me uh, muck about peanut oil. We go with the store brand stuff. We don't go with the um, we don't go with name brand. We go store brand. Store brand is best brand. Um, and then what else do I need here? Oh, one other ingredient I forgot. There we go. That's why we're going like. One other ingredient I forgot in our Baja corn is mayonnaise. We're going to do a half cup of this. So we're going to half cup of the or half of the container of the the um of the condensed milk to half cup of this or eye it up i like to eye equal parts basically equal parts of these two and they're going to blend out the thing and another thing i forgot to mention is we're going to top that all with cheese and broil it in the oven because uh, that's the way to go broil it in the oven make it delicioso um yeah, okay, cool. So let's get that. Now, I might try and make a guacamole. Uh, unfortunately, as far as guacamole goes, uh, my uh, avocados aren't super ripe. Wish they were, they're not. Okay, dokie, sorry about that. All right, we're back. So let's move this to where you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And let's get the lights on in here so that you guys can really um, see what I'm doing. One other thing I forgot, gotta get the safety gear here. Gotta get the safety gear here. We've got our, we've got our beer beer mic here for everybody. It's, uh, we've got uh, Vicious Hook Pineapple Sour by Flying Dog. So here's our beer mic. Hope you enjoy. Um, Morton, would you like to say anything to the beer mic? Yep. Absolutely. Of course, yes. They are wonderful people, Morton. Thank you so much. So let put a lapel mic back on. Change it from beer mic to lapel mic. Mm. Beer is definitely needed for cooking. Okay, so one thing I always do, if, you're, if you've seen my show before, you know we're big on safety here. Sorry if this is high pitched. Should be pretty sharp, and I spend plenty of time sharpening this for the trailer. Um, so if you've never cooked before, consider this like a learning experience. I like to make sure that we are practicing food safety and safety for ourselves. Um, so we're also gonna incorporate techniques to uh, keep our kitchen clean, keep our kitchen safe, keep you safe, keep me safe, the whole nine yards. Uh, one of the things here is gloves. Go get yourself a big old pack of sterile nitrate gloves uh, or latex, your, pro your preference. I like nitrate, uh, just in case someone's allergic. You never know. Uh, you don't want someone uh, getting hurt and we want to make sure that our food prep area is safe and good. Perfect Blaze, then this is for you. We're gonna make sure that you are prepped Set and ready to impress. Ready to impress. Next time you have a date over, I guarantee you'll have all the things you need to make this. This is a very simple one. This is actually a great, this is actually a great um, recipe for people who aren't super big into cooking. This is such a hands-off recipe as far as cooking goes. You're gonna be very happy with this one. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my salsa. And the reason I'm gonna start with my salsa is because of the bacon. So food safety, right? Bacon's meat, meat has bacteria, that bacteria gets into and onto things. I wanna clean as least amount as possible. I'm lazy, you're lazy, let's face it, we wanna be lazy people. Uh, so we're gonna start with the salsa, why? Because we're gonna be cutting everything on this cooking board. And if I cut the salsa first, I don't have to clean up uh, the cooking board, I don't have to wash the cooking board uh, until after I put the meat on it. So the fruits and the veggies and stuff like that, raw and cut up on the board, they're not gonna, 
they're not gonna make bacteria that's gonna get us sick without being cooked, right? So we can do all these things first. So we're gonna start with our extensive amount of tomatoes uh, because, well, hey, ooh, pardon me. Because tomatoes, there's a lot of them and it takes a long time. So I'm gonna get myself a bowl. Now when you see me off screen, I'm, I'm, I'm still in the room here. I'm just basically in the background uh, behind camera. I've got a whole setup behind the camera here. Morton's supposed to be handing me things, but he's a, he's a lazy bird. So, there's a bowl. All right, so let's bring this on down town. Okay, now I may screw this up terribly, and if I do, we blame someone else. Blame someone else. Blame someone who's not as good looking as me. Um, whoever you want, whoever you want, just go out there. All right, let's set this up here. Okay. Now, last time we did this, we had a little bit, we had a little bit better of a prep station here. Morton, I want you chilling out over here, bud. How about that? Okay. Uh, do a little bit better. Hang on. We can do a little bit better. Okay. Let's test this out. Can we see everything? Blame it on Goose. Absolutely. I blame it on Goose. I blame a lot of things on Goose. Okay, cool. So you guys can see my cutting board. We've got our bowl. I'm going to put the bowl over here to the side. Now, rule number one of cooking. I've got a really nice knife here. It's a really sharp knife. Sharp knives are safe knives. I don't care what you say. If it's dull, it slides around, slips around. But we're going to learn how to cut safely first. So when I cut, I never have my fingers out here. We're not playing the knife game, right? We don't want to play that game. That's how you lose a finger. Oh, the knife goes around my finger. Knife goes chop, chop, chop. We don't want to do that, right? Um, so we're going to tuck these bad boys in. Same with the thumb. We're going to tuck everything in. Tucked in, and we're going to put it flat up against the knife. And if we tuck in and put it flat up against the knife, as long as it's flat up against the knife, hey, guess what? We can't cut ourselves. We can't cut ourselves this way. We're not, there's no way to, unless you lift it all the way up, you're not cutting yourself this way. So as long as you keep your knuckles flat against this thing, you're safe. And then we just rock. We rock it. We rock and roll. That's how we do it. Angel entity. What am I making? Today we are making Baja corn and fruit salsa. Ooh, it's good stuff. Thanks for the bitch. Angel, thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't seen Angel on my YouTube channel, we have the trailer also on all my other social medias if you're following any of those. But yeah, we're making those. We'll play that midway through when we take a little break here while things are cooking. So let's cook up our salsa, shall we? Uh, I have these little tiny tomatoes, like I said. We're just going to slice and dice these. We're not going to be super crazy with them, but we're just going to slice and dice these ones. And we're just going to kind of throw them into the bowl. I'm not really concerned about how uh, well these are cut up, just that they're chopped up. Okay. And uh, the reason that is is simply that um, I'm gonna put these into a blender. Now, if you have a food processor, that would be preferred. I don't have one. And quite frankly, food processors are expensive, so I just go with the old blender. Cheap little blender from Walmart, good stuff. Love it. Okay. We're just gonna thing. You coming over? All right, food's on me. Food's on me. We're having D&D &D tomorrow, so I'm making a salsa for tomorrow for my D&D &D players. And, uh, uh, my wife's got a long day at work today, so I'm making my wife a fantastic little snack. Now, you can be a dish, too, as well, but we're making Baja corn, which is a Korean street corn. It's very, very good. I guarantee if you bring it as a side to any of your events, people are going to love you. You're going to be you're going to be the you're going to be the man, the woman, the non-binary deity of the hour. People are going to say, hey, invite that person back. Invite that person back. I know Bob bought beer, but that corn, man, that corn was the jam. That was where it's at. So yeah, we're not cutting these with any kind of particular um, style. We're just kind of cutting them so that they're all cut up. Yo, Ryan's one of those D&D players. Uh, what's, Reen? what's up, Reen? I'm making salsa, Reen. I'm making some salsa for you. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. So we're going to cook these up. I got some low-carb uh, tortilla chips for you, my friend. 
which is great if you're on the keto diet or if you're just trying to watch it we're going to use we're going to make some low carb uh, tortilla chips which are always good i'm excited for the D, D game tomorrow i'm stoked joe threw a ratchet in my plans for sure but certainly gonna certainly gonna came up with a a deus ex machina we'll, we'll make things happen for sure i'm excited for D, &D tomorrow Especially since I've been like going hard and tomorrow's my last day of not working uh, Monday I actually start my job officially my new job that I got so I'm super excited for that Super excited to start uh, My new position on Monday. I got training on Monday for my new position. So that's gonna be exciting and uh, <laughs> I Honestly, I can't wait. I can't wait So good stuff good stuff like, as you can see, we're just moving along here. We're rolling pretty well. We're rolling pretty fast. I might have to add more tomatoes, I think. I might have to add more tomatoes. We'll see. Um, I might not. We'll see. It's going to have a lot of other ingredients in it. We'll see once we add all the other ingredients what it comes out to. If we got to add more tomatoes or not. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Cool. Tomatoes cut. Poblano. Now, a lot of people do these things different ways. Uh, I find the easiest to just go right off the top, and then I just segment all three of these. Look at that. Done. Top's done. Then you just go in, pop that out, toss it right in there. Now, for these uh, four peppers, um, there is one thing I always tell people you want to kind of be careful of is these, uh, one, don't touch your eyes, but two, see this kind of white stuff? I don't like this. This, is, this causes bitterness. Some people know, some people don't. Um, this causes bitterness. Um, so it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't necessarily uh, want bitterness in my thing. Sometimes you, it's, it's a good thing. Like sometimes it's nice to have some some bitterness, some flavor in that respect. Um, salsa is not one of them. I don't want bitter salsa. I like bitter beer sometimes, but not bitter salsa. So we don't want that. We don't want that. Okay. And then we're going to rotate this this way. And as you can see, again, look at knuckles, safety, nice and safe. Got this nice. Like I said, nice poblano. I love poblanos. Poblano is one of my favorite peppers. I think it's an underappreciated pepper for sure. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just underappreciated where I am. But it's one of my favorites. I've said it many times before. I love poblanos. I love their flavor, their smokiness, their heat intensity. They're pretty great. So now what I'm doing is I'm just rocking the knife over these, just trying to dice it up a little bit more. Again, I want a semi-chunky salsa, uh, but I don't want it too chunky. And we're gonna put it in the blender so we don't gotta get super crazy about this. Um, I'm just gonna toss all that in there. All of that in there. And again, we're not worried about seeds getting in there. We really aren't. They're just gonna add a little bit of, a little bit of spice. Okay, a little bit of spice. Okay, now we're gonna add some, some different colors here. So again, I'm gonna do the same technique. I'm just gonna pop the top. Bada bing, bada boom, bada ba. I'm going to slice off these edges. I'm not super worried about too much waste here. And see, there's so little white inside these ones. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to slice the whole thing up. Because there's so little white in here, it's really not going to add a lot of bitterness to it. Um, I'm just going to cut down on time. And again, I want some of those seeds in there for heat. Some of those seeds in there for some heat. Ba -da -ba. You know, I was reading a study recently why people love watching cooking shows and stuff, right? And it's because it's like a communal thing. Like people like sit around the campfire, watch things cooking, like in tribal kind of situation. And so like watching Food Network or like what I'm doing here, it's grand time. I love it. I love that kind of camaraderie. I love cooking. I love cooking so much. That's why I'm really glad that now um, that the channel has gotten to where it's at. 
you know, I get to do, I could have done it at any point in time, but really, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was just kind of doing it, you know, for myself, which, you know, you can, all, you should always just do things for yourself, but, you know, sometimes it's awesome to do things for other people. You know, I like sharing stuff. Again, cooking's kind of like a communal thing, right? There's a lot of white stuff in there. I don't want those ends. This one's got a little bit of white in the middle. I just want to pop that out. There we go. Kind of find that happens more with the lighter colored peppers. But, um, you know, I'm glad I've grown to the point where, like, I can do these big streams and stuff. And uh, I get a pretty good viewership. It's really nice. So I'm glad that you guys are here. The stream is literally... Um, here because of people like you. Uh, you guys actually voted on this stream with the community challenge. So this stream is here for you, by you. I'm just putting on a show. Just putting on a show. Okay. Okay. A little bit more in there. Cool. Okay. Clean our knife off. Get rid of our mess. Now, if you have a garbage can next to you, you can clean as you go. That's how I like to do it. I usually cook for a lot of people uh, when I do cook, and so, oh, this one's got some nice stuff to it, no whiteness, I like that. Um, so I try to, as much as possible, clean as why I go. If you don't, uh, then you just got a big mess at the end and it sucks. And that's the thing I find that like deters a lot of people. A lot of people uh, don't want to cook because it's a huge mess, it's a huge hassle. And I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm all about it, I'm all for you. I know what it is to have a huge hassle uh, to have to clean up and it's not fun. And that was a big thing that kind of like, why I didn't cook so much growing up, like in my parents' house. Now my parents, they liked having a clean house. And uh, when I cook, I would make a mess all the time. And I was a young kid, so you know, I'm not, I'm not without fault. Like I could have done a better job cleaning things up. Um, but the times when I was like willing and able and wanted to cook and wanted to clean up, they were, they were very like, oh, you know, you're making a mess, you're making a mess. Um, and so, like, I was kind of stunted in my cooking growth, if you will. Uh, but now, now I cook when I want, how I want, uh, and I, I tend to find it really good. You're back, baby! Welcome back. Okay, so that is all of our peppers. Um, okay, now we're going to add a little bit of citrus. Uh, you can have fresh pineapple. I'm not, I'm not that crazy. I'm just going to use regular... Um, canned pineapple, fresh canned, uh, it's, it's not going to make much of a difference. Now there's juice in there, I'm definitely going to use that juice, I'm going to pour it right into here. I'm going to use that juice. I'm going to use that juice inside of our um, salsa, it's just going to add more flavor. More flavor, more sweetness, like I said, good stuff. And again, we're gonna we're gonna blend this up. So I'm not I'm just trying to get a nice dice on these. I'm not trying to get too crazy um, with how I cut these. Now I have mango in a can as well. Same thing, uh, mango in a can. Uh, you can use fresh mango. Uh, I'm not. I don't. You know, not a lot of fresh mango here. This comes pre-diced, so I'm just kind of dumping it in there. Uh, just gonna dump it's half a can, half a can of that. Uh, I don't want to use too much. Okay. Now we've got our mix. Mix that around. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Okay. You can definitely tell. I'm gonna need some more tomatoes. Lovely for me. I've got some washed fresh ones behind me. So give me a second. gods. The gods of the floor. Okay. And uh, again, we're just going to give these a rough, rough dice. I'm always concerned that I'm going to dice through my, uh, my cord, like my, my uh, microphone cord, every single time I do this. Every time I do this stream, I'm like, I'm going to go through my, my microphone cord without a doubt. It's going to happen. I'm going to have an oopsie daisy.
like I said, you don't have to be super precise with these cuts. They don't have to be in a specific way. You just want to get these nice and diced up um, so that they are, um, you know, easier to blend. Okay. And again, you can use a food processor if you want. Uh, I have a blender. Blender works. So we're going to mix this all in. As you see, we got a nice, look at that, nice, colorful mix of, uh, of stuff in there. Um, now what I might do, is I might add a little cornstarch to that. And what cornstarch do is thickens things up, because uh, there's not a lot of fats in there, right? That's kind of what this oil is going to be for, too. Add a little bit of this oil. Um, first, we're going to pull this glove off. Okay. Now what I do is when I pull off the glove, right, I put it in this hand, I make a fist, I pull this glove off as well. And now my dirty, nasty glove stuff is all in here. I don't have to worry about that. A little bit of peanut oil. You can use vegetable oil. Some people do. Uh, most people do. I like the nuttiness of peanut oil. Uh, so I use that. If you have someone who has a peanut allergy or just in general, like you don't like nuttiness, then you can do that. That's going to add a little fats to our concoction here. And then uh, we're going to refrigerate this. We're going to let all the juices suck themselves back in. And uh, then when we come back with that, we're going to we're going to go ahead and uh, blend it all up. But we're going to let it refrigerate first, let it cool down so all the juices suck back in, and then blend it all together. So now our workspace is a little dirty. Um, I... Oh, you know what I want to do, actually? There's one other thing I forgot to add to this. I want to add a little lime. Give me a second here. want a little lime in my salsa. I'm just going to cut this in half. Squeeze it over top. That's all I'm doing. I just cut it in half. Squeeze it over top. Nothing special. Now, if you don't think that's going to be hot enough, Right? Uh, you can add a little bit of chili powder. One, two shakes. Do five of those. And uh, if you really want to add a little spice to it, a little cayenne pepper. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit. Just a little bit. This is more of a preference thing. That's more of a preference thing if you want to add some additional heat. I want this to be a little bit spicier. So. Mix this all up, and into the fridge we go. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna wash this area down, and we're gonna get to part two, the Baja corn. Okay. It's very important, all times, make sure you're washing things, uh, cleaning things down, wiping things down. Uh, you do not want to get sick from contaminated, cross-contaminated food. Um, so I always try to make sure I clean over surfaces anytime I'm doing this kind of stuff uh, excessively. Same with my hands. You know, I touch that lime. Sure, is it going to cause anything? Probably not. Uh, safe and sorry are two different things. So they may both start with S, but you do not want to be one over the other. get on a second set of gloves for part dose. Okay. Alright. Come on over. Back 
back around. Okay. So, like I said, this one is very easy. Let me get you guys, get the stream of the date for myself here. Hang on. This is a very intense uh, setup. <laughs> it's not a very intense setup. It's very goofy setup that I've got going here. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. Okay. So, Baja corn, like I said, it is a very super, very easy thing. Um, for those who weren't here when I mentioned what it was, uh, we used two cans of corn. Right? We're gonna use a half a can of condensed sweetened milk. Um, we're gonna use some jalapenos, some green scallions. That's gonna be in and topped. So we're gonna use a bit, some garlic, uh, a little bit of mayonnaise, and we got the bacon behind us. Now, for those of you who may have noticed, uh, I didn't add these into the um, salsa yet. Uh, I'm gonna add them when I blend it. I'm gonna add them when I blend it. Uh, so that'll be a little bit towards the end. Brosaya TV, welcome. Welcome Brosaya TV, how's it going? Appreciate ya. And all of the cooking is gonna be done in this pan. Uh, we're gonna, basically everything gets dumped in the pan and then uh, we're gonna go from there. So I'm gonna take y'all with me over here to my stove. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do, how can I do this? Uh, let's see here. Eh. Do this. Let's hold you. Okay. So, we gotta do this bacon here. Okay. Okay. So, bacon's gonna get cooked first. Why is bacon gonna get cooked first? Because we wanna get that grease in the pan. Now I have a little knife here I'm gonna use to open it. Okay, set that to the side because we're gonna use that later. Okay. Get my gloves back on. And this is a new set of gloves. Again. Cooking for other people. No one wants your nasty fingers in there. You scratch your butt, pick your nose. No one wants that. I don't want that. Do you want that? Can't always eat at other people's houses. You can't always eat at other people's house. Oh, you can't always eat at other people's house. You can't eat. You can't eat. You can't eat at other people's house. Okay. Mmm. Okay, bacon. Now, I always think the silly, there we go. Okay, I want you there. Now I just washed this off, so we're gonna have to wash this after I cut the bacon. Uh, but essentially I'm just gonna cut these bacon into um, like squares, I guess would be the best way to kind of put it. Okay. Big old hunk of bacon. There you go, hunk of bacon. These are all thick cut bacon, that's how I prefer it. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to use bacon. We discussed you can use tofu bacon. You don't have to have bacon. You can make this vegetarian by simply omitting uh, the bacon in that respect. Uh, you can't make this vegan uh, because it's got mayonnaise and uh, condensed milk in it, but you can definitely do vegetarian with tofu or just omitting the bacon in general. I'm gonna just cut these into chunks. I like center cut for this personally, uh, mostly because center cut's thicker, and it's usually got a nice blend of fats to um, meat. That's kind of what you want, yeah. right? And essentially, what I'm looking for is like a good cup to half cup worth of bacon um, per two cans of this, because obviously you can make more. Uh, I just I'm making this to the recipe, right? So here we go. That's about a good, that's about a good half cup to a cup right there. Good enough for me. I'm not gonna get super, um, I'm not gonna get super crazy about it um, with that. So we're gonna kick off our stove back here. Okay. We're gonna put it about medium high. 
we're gonna let that skillet get hot. So we're just waiting for that skillet to get hot. Meanwhile, sit down, have a beer. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I just caught I just taught kitchen safety, bro, Saya. Um, right. Um, so we're just waiting for we're waiting for that skillet to warm up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. We're gonna pop these. Uh, bacon bits into there and we're gonna let them cook up and crisp up and you want to get it to just about depending on how you like your bacon I like it. I tend to like mine a little little chewy just before crispy uh, If you like yours crispy um, You know uh, basically you're gonna cook it to just a little bit before how you like your bacon And then you're gonna take the bacon out. Okay. Um, I saved The thing from before we were using the tomatoes in I'm just gonna toss it right back in there. That's fine. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to get you sick or anything like that. I'm going to take these, throw them in the skillet, let them crisp up to just before how I like my bacon. And then once that's done, I'm going to put them in here and take them out. Not going to drain the pan. Not going to drain the pan uh, because it's got all that bacon grease in it, right? And all the salts and stuff like that. I'm going to toss my corn right in. We're going start growing the corn up. And the corn is going to cook and crisp inside of that bacon grease. Um, now, if you're doing this and you're doing... Uh, Faking, <laughs> uh, you can just throw a pad of butter in there or oil, just a little bit, enough to kind of grease the pan so you can cook your corn in there. Uh, I would recommend the butter, um, but you gotta be careful because you don't want to clarify your butter by cooking it too much. And um, you want to make sure that you know uh, the, the corn is cooked properly enough. If you're doing faking, throw the faking in there, grill it up a little bit. Then I think a lot with fake bacons, they have oils in them like sunflower oils or like vegetable oils to kind of like basically give it a fattier texture. A lot of uh, fake meats uh, have that. Now tofu, not so much, but like a lot of fake meats tend to have uh, oils in them in order to enhance their flavor or give them more like of a meatiness to them. You know, basically make it a fat content, if you will. And so those tend to seep out when you cook those. You could use that as well. Uh, add butter in the pan, add oil in the pan. Uh, but you want to have something in there to cook your corn in because uh, if you don't, it's not going to crisp up because you want to get this crispy. You want this a little bit crispy. And you think to yourself, crispy corn, that sounds kind of weird. We want to brown it. We want to get a little bit of brown because this is going to be then put into the oven and baked with cheese on top to get ooey gooey with all of our other things such as the sweetened condensed milk and the mayonnaise. So. We're doing that to kind of give the corn a little bit of a, a sustenance to it, uh, a little bit of a, a texture, if you will. Otherwise, everything gets kind of gooey. You don't want gooey. I mean, gooey's good. I like this dish either which way. I personally think that having a little bit of toothiness to it, a little al dente, if you will, um, really enhances everything. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna do a little check here. Get a little close here. We're just gonna hold our hand over here. Yep, I can feel the heat emanating from the pan. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit to four. I'm just going to take big old clumps of bacon. I'm just going to toss them right in. Not really worried about it. Bop. Bop. Oh, look. The dog has come. She's heard the food calls. She's heard the food calls. I'm going to walk over here. Grab one of my things here. I'm going to remove my glove because I don't want to touch anything with my nasty... I only use my uh, left hand to touch the bacon with, uh, so I don't want to like touch everything else with a bacon hand. And we're just gonna let this do its thing. Now, if you're not a fan of bacon, you could you could do this with ham. Ham would be okay. You could do this with ham. That would be fine. Um, it, again, it's, it's kind of preference. It's kind of preference, right? We want to make sure that, you know, you're doing things to your, to your taste. Um, but I like a nice salty cured meat. Um, I wouldn't want to do it like, like, say, like salami, you know, like the classic salty cured meat. Um, but, uh, it definitely work with anything else. So that's cooking. That's cooking. Put you all back here. Thank you for jumping around with me. You're hopping, hip hopping around. Okay. Pick up our thing here. And we're gonna wash this thing again. Why are we gonna wash this thing again? Well, because like I said, we're gonna be cutting other things on there and we don't want to 
cross contaminate. So we're going to wash both of our knife, the knife handle, and this board uh, so that everything's clean again. And then we're going to get into the vegetables of the hot corn. So everything's cooking right now. Everything's cooking right now. We like that. We like that everything's cooking. Uh, but now that kind of puts us on a little bit, well, puts me on a little bit of a time limit. You don't have to do this yourself. You can take in little steps as you please. You might have more counter space than I do where you don't have to constantly wash things every five seconds. But we're trying to do a lot of food safety, food prep stuff uh, to make sure everything's going smooth. And so, you know, it's a little bit more extra work here for me. Really, you can just cook the bacon, dump everything in, worry about it later, right? Uh, I'm kind of doing things live so y'all can see it. This is a little bit more prep work with that. But hey, what are you going to do? Rotate your back around. Okay. Also, I'm tethered <laughs> with this cord, so that makes things a little bit different for me. Okay. So, we're going to get another pair of gloves. This is where things start getting hard because my hands start getting wet and moist. Can't get them in and out of these latex gloves anymore. Slip sliding around once you get a little moist, you know? Do with that what you will. Do with that what you will. Probably, but then, then we can't do ASMR. ASMR is kind of fun. my cutting hand. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna do two. Thank you for that sexy sax and the 100 bits. Appreciate that. Now, um, for this particular one, how I like to do this. Now you can slice these and dice these into little kind of, um, you can slice and dice these into little cubes. I like the round shape of the jalapenos. So I'm gonna do that because that's a preference of mine uh, for this type of, uh, this type of dish. I just like the, I like the aesthetic look to it. I don't worry about uh, the white stuff inside the jalapeno. Uh, Cause again, seeds, spice, good stuff. Um, so I'm just going to do that. We're going to do two jalapenos. Um, do one if you want to. Better preference. Um, actually, my wife. Really repurpose this one, other one here. She might not want as much spice as I do. I love fresh jalapenos. Fresh jalapenos are like my jam. Maybe we'll uh, cut back a little bit for her sakes. Maybe I'll throw some in this salsa. We'll add a little extra jalapeno to the salsa. How about that? That sounds good. Okay, so we're gonna take best of the best here. And, okay. Yeah, do some thin ones here. And these all look good. We'll throw these in the salsa. How about that, huh? We're just gonna have a really well blended salsa with a lot of different peppers in it. Jalapeno is like a staple, like flavor, I feel like. See, that's the thing too about cooking sometimes. You're just like, you know what? This sounds a little bit better. So, to show you what I'm doing, slice up my jalapenos. I cut off my tips. Look, it's circumcised jalapenos. I got my ones here that I'm I'm going to put in my thing and I dice these up and put these to the side because these are going to put in the jalapeno. Okay. Or in the salsa, if you will. Let's go to our things a little closer. Press down just a little bit. Just cook it a little bit faster than I want it to. Mmm, bacon. There we go. 
Look at that. Look at that bacon. Let's try this. I'm just getting the garlic ready. Um, I like to use a decent chunk of uh, garlic in this in this recipe. I guess decent for this recipe. Maybe not decent enough for like the true Italians out there. But decent enough. So we want four moderately sized cloves of garlic, right? Okay. Give it a good smush feel. Garlic. Smush. Alright, hopefully y'all can still hear me very well. If you can't, let me know in the chat. We're going to slice up this garlic real quick. Perfect. Perfect. I knew that cheap microphone I bought for this particular purpose was going to be very good. chunk of garlic in this one. Garlic is for preference. I like the garlic in here because again, it enhances the spice. Enhances the spice that we got going on here. So again, you're adding condensed milk. Condensed milk is very, very sweet. And uh, you don't want to over you don't want to overdo it with the sweetness on this on this dish. I mean maybe you do. You can again the taste is a preference. I like everything nice and blended. So there's our garlic. Nice and diced up, huh? Now, I like to use a decent amount of stalks on this one. I cut off just a little bit above the white. Now you can replant those if you want. You can replant those if you want, and they'll grow into new ones, but I like to cut a little bit over the white where you get our onions. Now, if you ever hear, if you ever walk into a house, you're like, mmm, something smells really, really, really good. It's garlic and onions, every time. Now, this one's, we're essentially just shredding them as thin as we want. I like to go super thin on these. I basically like the, uh, wonton soup level of like scallions. We get three stalks of this. 
slice it up nice and fine. Okay. Well, that's kind of gross. Ew. Okay. Okay. And there's two parts of this, okay? We're gonna have basically half of this is gonna go in the dish, half of this is gonna go on the dish. I like to do it, I mean that's the recommended one. I like to do like more like 75 goes in, 25 goes uh, 25 goes on. Uh, Cause I just like it as kind of like a like a garnishment almost. So we're gonna split these up. Okay, right. You got two halves, two halves of a whole idiot. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is already starting to look good. Okay, let's check back in with our bacon. Bacon's basically done for right now. So we're gonna pull the bacon out. There's our bacon, nice and cooked. A little bit of crispiness around the edges. Okay, now I've pre, I've pre-opened these because I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna pop these tops at this corner. Very careful not to cut yourself in this process. Sharp cans are sharp as fuck. Okay, and again, we're just gonna pour these two right into the pan. You see it soaked it all basically right up. Right? Just gonna stir this for a little bit <clears throat> so it soaks everything in. Stir everything so it soaks everything in. So yeah, we've poured our two cans of corn in there with all the rest of the bacon uh, grease. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna start just cooking and kind of, um, you know, crisping up is like what I like to say. That might not be the professional term for it, but hey, you know, that's that's what it is. Oh no. Come back here. Come back here. Microphone. There we go. Can I do this? Does this work? Ah no, microphone's fine. Okay. Okay, microphone. Okay. There we go. Let's try this. Let's be a little bit more favorable, I think. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's going to do its business. Uh, I'm going to add a little salt, a little pepper. Now, I have bacon in there already, so not too much salt, uh, but I don't have anything else. I'm going to add plenty of pepper. Like a good, nice mix of pepper. Yeah. I like pepper. Again, this is a preference. Now, I like to add a smidgen of uh, onion powder to this. Just a smidgen. Because, um, uh, I mean like the tiniest little bit, like a dusting. Because there's going to be that green onion in there, and that's really going to bring out a lot of those flavors. Um, but green onion, I find, isn't very... Um, it's just not very, it's not as aromatic as the rest of, the, of like the onion world, so. Okay. So we'll let that do 
its business. Okay. So that's going to do its business. We're going to let that kind of uh, figure itself out while it's doing it. And while it's figuring itself out, uh, we're going to move on back to our salsa. So we have these jalapenos. Let's toss them in there. That's all mixed up. Okay. All right. Okay. Big old hunk of red onion. off of this one. Lengthways like this, then rotate it and dice it. Find that to be the quickest, quickest way to kind of do that one. And let's give it a nice little rough chop. more than that especially for red onion red onion is very powerful so you're gonna smell you're gonna smell that you're gonna have that now I know I said I was gonna caramelize this um, I'm actually gonna side against that I'm gonna make a make a last second play here um, and change that just because I think with that mango and the pineapple in there I think that's really gonna be very sweet so I think caramelizing this and really bringing out more of that sweetness. I think that's just going to overdo it. So we're just going to just going to cut this up and do like kind of a rough chop of it, and uh, kind of add it in there. I still want its flavor in there. I still want its that that onion type of sweetness. Um, but I think caramelizing it will just kind of overdo it, and I don't want to overdo the onion flavor in this. It's really you know it's about the peppers, right? It's about the peppers, about the tomatoes. Um, I want the other parts to shine just a little bit, you know? There we go. All right. Let's just mix this all up. Ooh. Okay. Hello, phone guy. And then, so there we can see everything nice, well mixed, blended. You see a little bit of everything in here. So since you can see a little bit of everything, I find that makes it, you can see, you visually can see that's well balanced. You can visually see it's well balanced. Phone guy, welcome aboard the Salty Crew. For me and Morton, we appreciate you. Welcome on in, appreciate that follow. Welcome to the stream. This is our community challenge stream, everybody voted in on having uh, this stream uh, to have a Cooking with the Captain Part 2. And uh, so I'm your Captain Salted Dog. This here's Morton, my ever faithful companion. And today we are doing Baja corn and a homemade fresh salsa. So welcome on in. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate you so much. Um, let's get the blender out, shall we? Uh, we'll give our corn a little stir here while we're doing it. Corn a little stir. Turn this up too. Wanna get this corn rolling? Okay. So take off the glove.
gloves here. I've been touching nasty stuff. And let's get the blender out. Like I said, you can use a food processor, food processor for this. I do not have one. I have a blender. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to blend up all this lovely little salsa stuff here uh, to kind of get things rolling. Now you can't see it. I'm off screen here. Uh, I'm just getting the blender all set up. I'll bring you guys over here in a moment. I want to have everything prepped and ready. It's going to get loud. It's going to get loud. Okay, so. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, I'm so worried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome on in, phone guy. I am a streamed themed pirate. And uh, normally we do a uh, variety of different games and stuff like that. But today, uh, we're doing cooking. Uh, we're doing some cooking uh, while I'm prepping everything. And, uh, you know, we're having a grand old time, so I appreciate you popping on in. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I'm doing or what we're making, by all means, ask. Uh, and I shall do my best to entertain and let you know what those are. Um, but, yeah, welcome right in. Uh, one of these things here, okay. So we got this whole concoction. Bring it over here. Bring you over here. Whoop! And uh, we're going to get this all inside the blender all diced up and uh, get the ball rolling. So we're going to do a little bit at a time. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to drain a little bit of this liquid. There's a lot of liquid in here. And once we once we blend this up, we're going to have a lot more. I'm going to drain off some of this liquid in here. Because otherwise, I, like I said, for the salsa, I don't want it super chunky, but I also don't want it liquid. Right? I don't want like restaurant style liquid. So do a little bit there. Okay. It might get loud. One thing I tell everybody, unlike the stores, right? You see store salsa. Store salsa tends to be this bright, like almost like iridescent red, right? It's this bright red color. Homemade salsas aren't like that. Homemade salsas tend to have like different colors to them because they're not made with this like factory thing. You're not, you're not dyeing anything. And I'm not saying that name brand salsas and things like that dye stuff, but you are more likely to see homemade salsas have more of like a brown or like greenish tinge to them. Perfect. Just simply because they're made different. Mm, I can already smell it. A special salsa container right here. We'll pour this all into here. Salsa. See, that's the kind of consistency I'm looking for, right? Little chunky, not super liquidy. Look, it's like I measured that all out. If we plan that ahead of time. There, we got our salsa, right? Put that in the fridge, right? Let it uh, get a little cold for me. And then uh, we'll make up some fresh uh, fresh tortillas, tortilla chips. Try it out. It'll be a good time, right? All right, back over here. Whoopsie daisy. There goes my microphone again. I keep breaking it. All right. Okay. All right, so we got our salsa. It's all ground up. We're going to put it inside here. Now, if I put a little bit more tomato in there, it'd probably be a little redder. It'd probably be a little redder, for sure. But that's not what it's going for. It's going for flavor. Flavor is not always going to be, it's not always going to look store-bought, you know? Okay. So, with the corn, 
remember I said I wanted to I wanted to brown up the corn. I'm gonna show you what I meant by browning up this corn, right? So as you can see, it's got a browner tinge to it. A browner tinge than you might have expected. Um, but that's good. That's good. I want that. I want that coloration. Um, because it's again, it's gonna give it a texture, it's gonna give it a, a better texture. So we're gonna add these the bacon back in. Okay. Okay, our bacon. And we're gonna add our jalapenos. Our jalapenos. Add that in. We're gonna add our garlic in. And we're going to add our scallions in. Remember, 75% of what we cut up. Add all that in. Now we're adding it in at this particular juncture. Why? Because I want those flavors uh, to start cooking. I want to get them out. I want to get them out. I want to get them out. If you've never seen this before, phone guy, uh, what we're making today is called Baja corn. It's a Korean street corn. Uh, so we've got fresh jalapenos, green scallions, uh, garlic, uh, bacon, two cans of corn. We've got sweetened condensed milk. We're going to do half a can of that. A little bit of mayonnaise, okay? Salt, pepper, and then we're going to throw a shit ton of mozzarella in it and let it get nice and gooey and good. And then we're going to put a shit ton of mozzarella on top of it. And then we're going to bake it in the oven and that cast iron skillet's going to be mwah, fabulous. It's going to be delicious. And if you want the recipe to this, my recipe, um, exclamation point discord in the chat. I will be posting up the recipe from the stream as well uh, as uh, putting uh, this over on my uh, YouTube channel. It's Captain Salty Dog, CPT Salty Dog for the YouTube as well. And I'll have all that information on there for you as well. So we're gonna let these mix all these things in, get these let these people get to know each other. I really wanna really wanna show you this. I really wanna show you this. So look at that color. Look at that color in there. Look how colorful that looks. Right? And apologies, like my phone camera's not the best. You know, we, if I end up doing more of these, I'll get a more of a mobile setup. But look at this. It's this nice coloration. You know, it's got this nice hominess. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet with this. But that, look at that. It's fabulous. Nice color. Again, it's going to be something a little bit different than what most people are used to. So you're really going to really gonna impress some friends. Okay. While that's doing what it's doing, okay. let's make a couple of tortillas real quick, huh? Now... I'm going to air fry these. I'm going to air fry these. Admittedly, I like to be a little bit easy. I have an air fryer. You can just deep fry these. That's equally as fine. I'm just going to air fry them because I like to be a little lazy. Okay? Uh, but we're just making some homemade tortilla chips. For those who weren't here before, I was explaining this. This is tomorrow's. It's a multi-grain, low-carb uh, tortilla. Three carbs per tortilla. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good low-carb option for people who want uh, to have it. And since we didn't put any meats or anything on here, it's just vegetables. I'm not really worried about throwing these on here uh, with the rest of the stuff. If anything, they're just going to suck up some of that flavor. Uh, same thing with the knife. I'm not really worried about cleaning it off uh, because it's just going to suck up the rest of the flavor. I'm just going to give these a nice cut. Okay. It's like we're making a pizza pie, huh? Now you can just buy store bought. I won't show anyone about store bought. I have store bought. I have store bought one. Uh, but this wouldn't be a cooking stream if I didn't make some tea, right? So now you can just take these stacks, throw them in a deep fryer, let them pop up. You could bake them in the oven if you want to bake them. That's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them in a bowl with a little bit of uh, this little peanut oil, and I'm going to air fry them. I'll let them air fry out, and that'll be a good time. Be a real good time. Let's pull that up. Let's get my little bowl over here. Uh, 
Now for this one, I like to use a wider brimmed bowl. And the reason I want the wider brim bowl is just so that I can see a little bit of everything. I throw a little bit of boop in the bottom, a little oil in the bottom there, a little salt as well. And we're going to just separate these out, kind of toss them in. That way they can kind of get tossed around a bit. I want to coat these as much as possible. It's kind of the plan here, right? So I do, I'm going to layer this, it's kind of how I do it. I can smell the food behind me too. I can smell that, uh, that corn cooking and I got to tell you, it is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I am excited. Okay, so we got the bottom of this coated. Another thing, we're just gonna do another little like Pick up our cap that we dropped. Again, have a little toss, toss a little salt. And we're gonna relayer this. Just keep doing this. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I really want to get every little edge of these coated. Uh, that way, when I throw them in the air fryer, uh, they're gonna they're all gonna crisp. Same thing too. If you're gonna bake, I would do it this way as well. A little bit of oil, layer, tossy toss, good to go. You know. Okay. I'm gonna get a rubber spatula for this one. Kind of lazy rubber spatula. Got a little corn in there. Oopsie. I'm just gonna have this kind of tossed around a bit. Now you can just do this with your hands if you want. Again, gloved hands if you're gonna serve it to people. No one wants to touch your nasty hands. Maybe you got clean hands. I don't know if you got nasty hands. But I know people don't want my hands on their food. So I'm just gonna do it with a rubber spatula. Triple. That's right. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Check back in on the corn over here. See how that's doing. All right. Okay. So now we've got this. This is good. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect. So now we got it to where the corn's starting to popping. And everything's nice and uh good. So let's let's bring you guys over here. So look at this. Now we got the corn popping. It's starting to stick a little bit to the bottom pan, right? Because it's starting to get like crispy. And we've kind of cooked out a lot of that bacon grease from before. So now that's all that's left is like the moisture that's inside these things. So we don't want this going on for too long, um, but I did want to get rid of most of the moisture. See how like before, there was, there's not a lot of grease down there. There was before. This has all kind of been sopped up, soaked up by the corn and all the other things inside here. So now we got this nice blend of all these aromatics, pepper, spices, and this is where we throw the curveball in. This is where the curveball in. Sorry, I'm a one-man band, so like shaky camera angles and all, that's where it's at. Uh, we're going to add... Our gross stuff. No, we're gonna add our delicious stuff. This is sweetened condensed milk. This stuff is liquid candy. Mm. Mm. Liquid candy. Can't go wrong with it. Okay. What we're gonna do? Off screen here. I'm grabbing myself a little spoon. A spoon, so I got a, a, uh, I got a fork. I got a fork. If you used to eat this daily, well, then this is really gonna, this is pretty. So we're half a can of this. We're gonna flop it right in. Half a can of that, easy as you please, and then more or less the same amount of mayo. Um, wash this off just so I can use it for the mayo. And that's disposable. I can still grab another disposable one, but you know. Trying to save the environment a little bit here today. 
trying to be an environmental hero. Do the same amount of mail. Now, those of you who are familiar with like creamed corn, it's similar. It's got a similar uh, profile to it, uh, for sure. It's got a similar taste profile to it in that respect. So we're going to mix that up, dissolve it homogenous. Bring you guys over to see the gooey goodness. All the gooey goodness, right? Now you can start to see it take on its sweet, gooey nature here. Okay, we've got to turn this down to low. Um, we don't want this to we don't want this to cook and get like kind of nasty, right? This is tough with one hand, I'm not gonna lie. But you see how it's nice and thick? We just wanna have everything incorporated in there. So it's sweet, it's tangy, it's spicy, it's savory. Um, now we're gonna Hit the bake over here in the oven, and uh, 350 will be perfect, actually. So we're going to do 350. Preheat this oven. Here we go, because this is going to go in. But before it goes in, before it goes in, uh, we have to add one thing. Low moisture, that's important. Whole milk, also important. Mozzarella. We're going to add this in little, little bits so it gets nice and gooey in here. I, got, I need two hands for this, so unfortunately you're going to have to watch it from the distance. I'll show you the after effect. But essentially about a half cup of this. And you just want to slowly add in as you stir. Because you want it to mix, you don't want it to clump up. Clumping up sucks. And you want to make sure that this is on a low heat while doing this. You don't want to... Um, mozzarella has proteins in it. And when you're cooking cheese, <clears throat> when you're cooking cheeses, uh, especially ones you want to melt, if you cook them too fast, the proteins harden and they create those really hard pockets of uh, like solid chunks of protein. And uh, that's not desired. You know, a lot of people don't like that, right? You're not trying to make cheese curds. You're trying to make gooey, cheesy goodness, right? So, and you can use any cheese if you want. Uh, mozzarella works best, in my opinion, um, just because it's kind of a, it's a neutral cheese and it's about the gooeyness. Captain's wearing his light vest. And then you remember those little bits that we saved of the, uh, of the scallions? This is where they come into play. We're just going to add a throw it on top, kind of like a garnish, but also for a little extra added flavor. Now that we got those added, I'll show you. Look a little bit something like this before going into the oven. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Right? This is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. So we'll put this in 350 once that comes up to temp, and this is gonna cook this, boil this, and it's gonna be this cheesy, baked, like just deliciousness. It's gonna be good. So I'm gonna let this sit here while that preheats. Smash Brothers, what's going on, my bud? What's going on? Okay. okay. <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to take a slight break here. Uh, I'm going to clean up most of this mess while the oven preheats. Uh, I'm going to send off to you guys. I'll show you off. Uh, I'll meet you guys upstairs for a short second. And uh, I'll show you guys uh, who are new to the channel um, a little bit about what this channel is all about. It'll be a good time. <laughs> uh, and stream highlights for those who can't check out all the other social medias, which are seen.
over here that's right i'm not just here on twitch i'm also on youtube uh if you're seeing this in the future on one of these other social media things uh, what are you doing come and follow me over on twitch tv that's right right here twitch tv that's me captain salty dog at twitch tv uh you can come see all the stuff that i do live uh over on tiktok that's this one right here lovely little thing uh not only do i do shorts like horror shorts uh i also do uh different things where i interact with the community as well as you'd see some of the highlights there twitter's when i'm going live check it out fantastic time instagram also the same thing as well as a recap and then exclamation point discord some of you guys already checked out uh in chat that'll kick you all those ones how awesome is that right Ooh. all right bring that back up to bear if I do a how-to stream? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, actually, uh, I do, from time to time, do uh, different kind of streams where I do uh, model building and stuff like that for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, but if there's enough interest in me doing a stream on uh, how-to on to do, like, basic video ed edits and stuff like that, I absolutely would, you know, I would absolutely be uh, delighted to do that. Um, I use a pretty cheap program. I use the Adobe Premiere Rush. Uh, but I've been using it for quite some time, and I've done a couple of different video edits uh, for it, with it. Uh, I've even done one for Brosai as well. I've done a video editor too for him. It's actually how I make all of my um, uh, like stream edits and clips and stuff. Um, so I could definitely do a how-to on it. It's a very simple program to use, very easy to kind of do. And I can kind of give you a, like an impromptu. I'm by no means a professional when it comes to those types of things. Um, you know, but I know how to make things work with not professional equipment. Um, that's kind of something I'm good at is taking the cheap stuff and making it work. Um, so yeah, I could definitely do that in the, in the future. Uh, I think in the discord, there is a like recommendation stream or something like that for like recommending games and stuff. But if you want to see a stream that's not related to gaming, you're like, Hey, I'd like to see a stream that's X, Y, and Zeta, um, in relation to, you know, this thing or whatever. Um, then yeah, yeah, uh, you could, I could definitely do that. Um, I was looking for a, into more info on editing. I use shortcut, uh, but I'm, I have like a basic knowledge of it. Yeah, shoot. Um, yeah, rush it. You have to pay for it, but it's like super cheap. I think it's like $12 a month. Um, but the program itself is like really intuitive and very easy to use. And I have a lot of tricks and stuff like that for it that I could definitely show you. Um, absolutely. Um, well, we can do a stream on that one for us here. If there isn't a, if I've been neglectful in the Discord, um, yeah, maybe. Uh, might be cheaper. Uh, if there is, uh, if there's, uh, not a place in the Discord to put, like, recommendations for games and streams and stuff like that, uh, absolutely, you could just go ahead and, um, put in, like, the Just Chatting or, or, or one of the things there, and I'll definitely do a video on it. Um, I could even, you know, post it to like the YouTube channel and stuff as well, um, and definitely get you hooked up with that. It's not terribly difficult to do, um, but it's definitely something that I can get you to do. Uh, so you can see it's already starting to melt. The cheesy goodness is already starting to melt. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this into the oven. It's up to bare 350. We're gonna put it in the mid lower rack area, and uh, I'm gonna set the timer for. 12 minutes. Why 12 minutes? Eh, I figured that, that should do. That should do about it. I think it's probably going to have to go for a little bit more. Um, but I really want to try and get a little bit of browning on the top for it while we get these things rolling. So, let's head on over here to our air fryer. Hey, look, it's the meat. Okay, so I've got this awesome, super cool air fryer. And uh, it's got like dual loaders and stuff like that. Now again, you could bake. Oops, Daisy. You could bake these. You could just deep fry them. I'm air frying them because I have an air fryer. It's easier for me. Uh, but you could do that if you're gonna bake it. Um, I think like I would say like 350 for like 350 for like two to five minutes. And you can just bake these tortillas with a little bit of oil, you'd be good to go. You're going to prep them the same way. It's just how you do that. Yo, Goose! Goose, subscribe to the channel. Sub Goose, the Goose42. Thank you so much for that subscription. How's it going, Chief? How's it going, Chief? Hey, Goose, I got 
something to make you jealous. I got something to make you jealous. Hang on, two seconds. Two seconds. You know, we're making Baja corn, and that's today, but, uh, you know, I got a couple of these. A couple of these from a local, you know, local butcher area, you know? Mmm, these are thick, delicious. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna single, single layer these chips. We want all the stuff to kind of get through. So this is gonna be a little bit of a process. I think we only have going for like five minutes or so. Though. This should be pretty quick, pretty quick, I think. Um, but we're gonna dual load this. We're gonna single layer them, making our own homemade tortillas. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. For those of you who don't are not in the know, the goose, the goose 42. Uh, they are the person who wrote the theme song, the Captain Sullivan theme song that you all got to listen to just a few moments ago. And they also are a good friend of the channel and a personal good friend. Uh, I've had them come down here plenty of times and hang out with me and you know, dance the Twilight Fandango with a couple of brewskis. Uh, oh shit, gosh, They're from the Canada. I'm from the U.S. But they they hang out and have a good time. This. I think I can get away with eight minutes. If they're fine, we'll see. I don't know how crispy they're gonna be after that. We'll see if they are. I'm good. Save the day. Yeah. Hey yo. Yo, go. we gotta get some borrow trauma going very soon. I, I would. I, I. I. I feel the need to captain borrow trauma. Like we need to make that happen very shortly. I feel like we haven't had the chance to do so. Um. You're on your way, hey, yeah. I got them steaks, man. I got them steaks. Don't worry, when I come up and visit, when I come up and visit in Canada, I'll make sure that I, uh, I make sure that I, uh, I, I bring my cooking pro lesson. I'll come up there and cook some, some steaks on, we'll do some, we'll do some steaks on the barbie, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, yeah? Yeah, a little steak on the barbie, it'd be a good time, yeah? Thick cut, good stuff. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. Bring you guys here. You can come sit down at the bar with me while we wait for all these things to cook. Get you all set, sorted and set, settled, huh? How about that? How about that? Vicarious! Vicariously. What's on the menu today? I can tell you what the menu is. I don't have a prompt for it, but I'll tell you what's on the menu today. Uh, we are making Baja corn. I should have made that a thing. I should have made that a, an exclamation point. I'll have to do that next time. I'm, I'm dumb, I didn't do it. Um, but uh, we're making Baja corn. Baja corn is Korean street corn, uh, consisting of bacon, jalapenos, um, a little bit of uh, condensed sweetened milk along with some mayo, green scallion, salt and pepper to taste, and then a lot of mozzarella. We have that currently baking in the oven right now, uh, as well as we made a homemade uh, pineapple mango salsa. And so our pineapple mango salsa uh, is just a simple blend of uh, four different kinds of peppers. Well, more than that. It's just, we got red, yellow, and orange, along with poblano, jalapeno, uh, fresh little tiny uh, sweetened cherry tomatoes, all blended with some um, canned pineapple and canned mango. I could have gotten it fresh, but I decided not to. And then we are currently baking in the air fryer. Not always necessary, but uh, easy enough. We're currently baking in the air fryer uh, some low carb tortilla chips uh, made by Tumoros. Uh, they make a multi grain three, uh, for every five chips, it's like three grams of carbs, which as far as chips goes, that's pretty good. We have those air frying with some uh, peanut oil and cracked uh, flake salt. So we're just waiting for those things to do. So we're resting and chilling, relaxing, key boy, and all that good stuff. Welcome, welcome to the stream. I'm Captain Salty Dog. My friend and sous chef is Morton. He's hanging out over there. And we're just kind of waiting for everything to cook uh, at this point in time. So we're chilling, we're relaxing. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Oh. It sure is. It sure is. Only the finest and freshest ingredients uh, here on the Salted Duck channel. 
Um, but yeah, uh, exclamation point Discord uh, vicariously. And um, I'm going to be putting the uh, menu, uh, not menu, but like the recipes uh, there shortly. I think I have a spot for it, but I probably forgot. So that's something I'll add later. And then um, also I'll be adding everything uh, to YouTube. I started finally getting YouTube off the ground so that we can do more of that. Uh, and we'll be having fun with that. But yeah, now we're just going to quick, quick blast all of these things. Oh, my kitchen smells amazing. Hey, welcome aboard, Vicariously. From me and Morton over to you, we appreciate you joining the crew. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, smell a vision, Matt? I hope so. Did you hear? Did you hear? Here's here's one. Y'all hear about the zombie pigs? Y'all hear about the zombie pigs? Or am I the only one who heard about the zombie pigs? Because the zombie pigs, that, that's, that's my new, well, we, should, we, we are playing God and we need to stop. Apparently, for those of you who are not in the know, uh, they, they invented a drug that a pig died. An hour later, they basically injected them with this drug that reconstituted their uh, vitality. So their organs and everything, their blood started flowing and pumping and stuff like that. And they basically brought the pig back from the dead, but no, no brain function whatsoever, like minimal brain function. But all the organs and everything were brought back uh, uh, alive. Uh, so zombie pigs. Zombie pigs. Um, and I know this is going to sound like it's a joke, it's a legitimate thing, uh, but I came up with the best home for it, because now that we have zombie pigs, that's going to create the, the apocalypse. Upon us. No, that's the real thing. Uh, uh, Google it. It's not. I don't know why. I'm kind of uh, scared that. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, the uh, infection happens with deer. Um, there's also the the, uh, the plant that does it. There's the fungal plant that injects its spores into ants. And it makes them do like crazy shit, I think. Uh, like basically like kind of like they kinda of, like flow around and do like weird stuff. I can't remember the exact like thing for it, but essentially like the ants would like they climb up to a thing because they can spread the score and it's so bad that like other ants like know about this and they're like, hey listen, we're gonna we gotta get rid of this ant. <laughs> this ant's gonna cause some problems. Um, yeah, I've heard of the deer one. But yeah, they have a drug that does that. And the thing that kind of creeps me out as far as that is, like, so pigs um, have a lot of, like, similar things when it comes to, like, traits. Uh, like, pig skin, for instance, is very similar to, like, human skin, if not, like, an exact replica. So there's, like, a lot of similarities with it. I'm just like, man, this is not the year, man. First, you know, we had we had COVID. And then my monkey pox is, is ramping up. And now we got zombie pigs. Listen, I've played a lot of Minecraft. I, I know what to do with zombie pigs. I'm really well versed in fucking shit up, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I don't know how I feel about that at all. <laughs> Not a fan. Um, but yeah, I just uh, I was I was I watched a couple of videos, read a couple articles on it recently. I'm by no means an expert, and I never pretend to be. Uh, I just feel that being educated as best you can at any kind of subject is kind of a good thing. Uh, but damn, zombie pigs. Not a fan, not a fan. All right, let's, let's check on these bad boys. Let's see if they are, ooh, yeah. Look at that, okay. That worked a little bit better than I thought it would, but I did not prep the bowl to put them in. Kind of got crispy, too crispy. Okay, so eight minutes was too much. I think six minutes is the money, huh? Oh, I forget. These are multi-grain too, so these are gonna be a little bit different than uh, normal chips. Yeah. It smells good though. It smells really good. Wish we had that smell of vision because these smell great. T minus a minute, and the corn will be ready. Pull that out. Take a gander. 
pull that out, take a gander. All right, so be back in. Get these back in. Six minutes, I think, will do. I think six minutes will be more than enough for these bad boys. Otherwise, I think they're going to overbake. But I see they do look really good. So. I can do that one. Or like, what do I know? It's not like I'm a chef or something. That's the corn. Sent you a video on the Discord of the Zombie Apocalypse of fifteen ninety-nine. Watch me on the big screen. Oh boy. Alright. Speaking of big screen. That beeping noise means our corn is. It's ready. But are you ready? Ready, but are you ready is the question. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Gooey, delicious Baja corn. Huh? How about that? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. We'll let this uh, chill for a second or two on the stove top so we can kind of wind down a little bit. And then we will get a spoonful of that. Give it a good shot, huh? Get a good old spoonful of that. Give it a shot. That was a cool beer. That beer is gone now. There's no more beer. Beer is gone. Zombie Apocalypse 59. I'll definitely take a look at that video. I love uh, I love all that weird stuff, you know? All that conspiracy theory, like weird things and, and stuff like that. I love that stuff. That stuff's wild. So, I know we're going to do guacamole uh, for the stream as well. But the problem is, is my avocados did not ripen in time. So we can't do guacamole. Sorry, I wish we could, but our salsa came through, so we'll pull that out of the fridge, take a look, see how things are. Alright, here's our salsa. Okay. Now, as I said before, your the, like, salsas and stuff like that that you'd expect from this store are different. They're different than what, what you're going to make at home. So, yeah, it's not red, but I guarantee you the flavor's there. bit. I want a whole lot. I want to spoil my dinner. My dinner being that corn. I eat so much of that corn. I love it. The hot corn is one of my favorite things, uh, without a doubt. Okay. They talk about how Shakespeare's play going from happy cheer to dark and sad. All right, I'm down. Down for a little, little conspiracy. So these are, these are pre-made chips. Um, or not pre-made. These are homemade chips. I got these as well. Get them geared up. So, these are our low carb chips. Multi grain low carb chips. Smell good. Give it a little, little dollop of daisy here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
that's hot. Keto though, so for me they're like, they're like okay. Keto stuff is kind of like, you know, you gotta be, you gotta kind of be in it. Now, this is our our multi grain chip, but look at that. This one up. Look at that. You got that nice coloration. You can see all the different kind of peppers in there. Um, everything's just very well like balanced. Um, and I gotta say, it's 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 packed. Oh, that's less of a hot bite. I must have got a, um, I must have got like a a seed or something. That's good. Mm. That's really good. I can see. You can see. The consistency, right? A little bit chunky, not too liquidy. I'm glad we drained um, we drained that off. That's delicious. It's so good. We'll get the final verdict from my D and D players tomorrow, but this is good. This is good salsa. I can eat that for days. Oh, no sheep, no sheep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm enjoying this too much. <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh. I got another spicy spot. That's good. That's super good. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. Sorry, y'all got to do this little ASMR right now. That's phenomenal. I love it. I'm just gonna get a small little bit of it. But let's check out this baja corn. Mm. So there's our peach mango salsa. That's good. We have a lot more of that later. Mm. Off, off scene, I'm gonna be off, off stream, I'm gonna be having more of that. That's good. Whew. That's uh, spicy. That's spicy though. It's the right amount of heat though. It's the right amount of heat where it's it's hot, sweaty good but it's not like holy crap I can't eat this so I like that let's try this out let's put our pot down here or dang I want to burn my countertop I want y'all to be able to see this right. can't you down <clears throat> This is our Baja corn. So I find myself a good old spoon. Got a spoon? I do, there's a spoon. Okay, there we go. Right. So, refresh of what's in this. We've got bacon, garlic, two cans of corn, three stalks of green onions, a little bit of onion powder, salt and pepper to taste, and mayo and uh, condensed sweet milk. Right? And then a bunch of mozzarella, obviously. So we're gonna scoop off sky size here. Now you can leave this in for longer. If you wanna broil this too, uh, broiling it's always good. Uh, it always comes out very nice with a broil because then you get that nice brown top. I'm a little impatient. I don't wanna wait for that. So we're just gonna take a big old scoop here. Oh, look at that, the scratch. Okay, take the end, end bits here, there we go. It's a very hot, okay, so we're just gonna scoop 
scooch this over to the side here. Yeah. Got our super, super nice hot sauce. Guess okay. we'll need a thumbnail, huh? Here's our. Do it, do it for the ground. Do it for the ground. Homemade salsa, chips, the hot corn. You can't go wrong with it, right? Here you go, Morton. Can't go wrong with any of this, right? Fantastic. Oh, even better. Also good. So here's our uh, Baja corn. Take a little tester, a little tasty tester here. You can see, do we have the whole thing? Like everything's incorporated, right? Everything's incorporated. So good. Like, I can't describe how good this is. I can eat buckets of this. Hmm. I can eat buckets of this. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm still like, kind of like, like my face is still red from the, uh, from the, uh, the salsa. The salsa is still like hot. Anyway, that is my hot corn and my homemade pineapple mango salsa. Um, that's the two items that we're making today. Hope that you guys really did enjoy the stream overall. Um, I really enjoy these streams. I really enjoy being able to do them. Um, be on the lookout for our next community challenge, which is always another one of these streams. It takes a while for me to set up, and I have to invest a little bit of time into it, and obviously money to purchase these things. Now, I get to eat all the wonderful things I send time in, but that's why I do it as a community challenge, not like an everyday stream, so that you guys get a little something special the back end and I get to share in you know what I love to do which is cooking um, it's definitely a passion of mine much like this is a passion of mine uh, to do twitch streaming and uh, and be up here in front of everybody doing what I do I hope you guys enjoyed the stream I hope you guys enjoyed these things uh, tell me what you like tell me what you what you think uh, if you're watching this in the future and you're watching this on YouTube hey put it in the comments below if you're watching this live on my twitch hey go over to my discord Go ahead and slam that out and and, and, uh, and uh, tell me what you think. Go to the Just Chatting section. Uh, I'm going to create a specific section in the Discord for the cooking streams along with the recipes and stuff like that. And then be on the lookout for um, my next streams and uh, everything we're doing. My streaming schedule is going to be a little goofy uh, moving forward. Uh, I'm starting a new job on Monday. Um, and so timing and how things are is going to be a little bit different. Uh, fear not. Still be streaming. I'll just have to wait till I have the new scheduling uh, parameters uh, in order to do that a little bit more. Uh, but hey, you know, uh, in the meantime, you know, I'm here. We'll do these things. Uh, as discussed with somebody with some people, hey, we'll we'll see what we can do about uh, maybe doing a stream to show people how to edit stuff uh, for editing videos. Because uh, I do editing for these videos as well as editing for all the videos that I do, as well as that horror short that you saw a little bit sooner um, in the day. Other than that, though, that's that's going to be the end of this stream. Um, me and Morton really appreciate you sticking around, hanging out with us, doing what you do, being who you are. Remember, we support the crew that supports us, and that means you guys. You guys, gals, lads, lasses, lassos, non-binary, DD, that's some more. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without you guys here, and I really do appreciate that uh, for sure. 
uh, because otherwise, you know, I may have not made this delicious thing that I now get to enjoy. Mm. So good. So good. But, um, hey, I appreciate every one of you. Um, stick around, though, because a part of the supporting the people that I support, uh, we're going to go ahead and raid out to another streamer. Um, we'll meet you guys back at the captain's table. We'll be serving this dish at the captain's table, so I hope to see you there. And we'll find someone to raid. They'll say, hi, hello, how do you do? Give them some love as well from me to you. And, uh, yeah, so stick around. I'll meet you guys upstairs in a couple of seconds here. Yeah. Meet you guys in a couple of seconds here. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what we got to raid. Join me.